I now hand the conference over to Mr. Shashank Ganesh from EY. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you very much, Faisan. Good afternoon to all the participants on the call. Good morning if you're logging in from the Western side. Before we proceed to the call, let me remind you that the discussion may contain forward-looking statements that may involve known or unknown risks, uncertainties, and other factors. Therefore, it must be viewed in conjunction with the business risk that could cause further result performance or achievements to differ significantly from what is expressed or implied by such forward-looking statements. To take us through the results and answer your questions today, we have the Senior Management of Tata LXC, represented by Mr. Manoj Raghavan, Managing Director and CEO, Mr. Nitin Pai, Chief Marketing and Chief Strategy Officer, Mr. Gaurav Bajaj, Chief Financial Officer, and Ms. Kaveri Shira, Company Secretary. We will start the call with a brief overview of the past quarter by Mr. Raghavan, followed by a Q&A session. We would appreciate your cooperation in restricting yourself to two questions to allow participants an opportunity to interact. If you have any further questions, you may join the queue, and we will be happy to respond to them if time permits. Having said that, I would like to hand over the call to Mr. Manoj Raghavan. Over to you, Manoj. Uh, thanks, Ashank. Uh, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us today for a Q4 uh, earnings call. Uh, I hope all of you are safe and healthy. Um, on, the, on the financial performance part, uh, I'm very happy to report uh, that we delivered, uh, you know, uh, once again, segment-leading results in the last financial year, 2022. Our revenue from operations during the year grew by 35.3% year-on-year to, to, to 2,470 crores. For the year, we reported profit before tax of uh, 745 crores and profit after tax of close to 550 crores. Uh, which is a 49.3% growth over the previous year. Our Q4 revenue from operations stood at 681.7 crores, growing sequentially by 7.3% year on year. So, year on year revenue growth during the quarter was 31.5%. Our profit after tax during the quarter was 160 crores, growing 38.9% uh, year on year. Uh, EPD, our largest division, continues to show uh, strong growth. Uh, EPD grew 7.6% sequ sequentially in constant currency terms. Uh, our, our industrial design uh, division too witnessed strong sequential growth of 8.7% in constant currency terms. Uh, increasingly, we are seeing good traction for our design digital offerings. That's a key reason for our industrial design division growing well along with EPD in this quarter. Our transportation uh, business unit grew 8.3% sequentially in constant currency terms during the quarter which is aided by large deal wins across autonomous uh, electric vehicles and digital. We won new customers as well as multi-year deals across geographies led by Europe. Uh, we were selected by a leading German tier one supplier for establishing an offshore development center for autonomous driving and ADAS uh, technology. We won multi-year, multi-million dollar uh, deal for EV system development from a global automotive leader. Our media and communication business unit continues to demonstrate consistent growth, growing 7.2% sequentially in constant currency terms in the last quarter. This growth, again, is powered by large deals and market share we are gaining from competition uh, and transformation as well as platform-led deals. As an example, we, we won a five-year deal with a Middle East broadcasting leader for an end-to-end -end streaming video implementation and multi-year operational support. This is a truly uh, designed digital deal, which includes end-to-end uh, streaming video solution, um, you know, the, the IP that we have TE play, Tidal is white, white level streaming video and OTT solution, the research, experience, design, UX and UI from our design team. The LCAC business to witness strong growth. Um, uh, we, we, we grew upwards of 70% uh, year on year and 6.8% sequentially in constant currency. This was supported by demand for our regulatory service offerings and digital and connected health related engagements. This is an example of the kind of deals we are winning here. A North American healthcare provider selected Tata LXC for providing you know, cloud engineering services. Overall, for the company, we continue to win large deals across our key business units and keep the deal pipeline healthy. We've also been able to maintain a favorable on-site, onshore off-site uh, revenue mix, uh, which helps us maintain our margins at a healthy rate. As a part of our innovation effort uh, uh, in, 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 the, in the last quarter, we unveiled uh, T-Engage, which is a digital health platform for omnichannel care and patient engagement. This was launched at the HIMSS Global Health Conference and Exhibition in, in March 2022. 
um, we are also taking uh, a strong position on the ESG front. Cardalexi has committed itself to ambitious goals of achieving 100% carbon neutrality by 2030. And by 2025, we aim to half our carbon footprint. We have outlined multiple streams of action along, uh, along, with, along key areas of materiality for the company. On the talent front, um, you know, we are all aware of the current supply side challenges that the industry is facing. Uh, and we continue to invest in accelerated hiring of both freshers and lateral talent, as well as training and leadership development uh, 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 for, for our uh, future. During the financial year um, 2022 and the last quarter, we continued with adding to our resource base in line with the growth of our business. We added uh, uh, more than 2,000 employees on a net basis uh, in, in Q4. We've also been proactively engaging with our employees and have deployed a number of measures to engage engage better, engage more. Uh, as a result, the attrition numbers this quarter were better than the overall industry. That said, you know, it is still at an elevated uh, um, number and we need to constantly keep watch on our attrition numbers. At an overall level, the quarter was a very rewarding one for us with, uh, with, uh, with a good top line and bottom line growth. Uh, our strategy of growth is playing out well, and we are able to maintain our margins as well. We are also witnessing good success in winning deals in, in adjacencies, and that has also helped us in maintaining our growth momentum. And as we enter the new financial year, our order books look strong. We continue to see traction in the large deal discussions, and the deal pipeline is also very healthy. Um, with that, I would like to hand it over for a Q&A session. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Reminder to the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question, we press star and one. The first question is from the line of Mayang Babla from Dalal and Rocha. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, everyone, and thank you for the opportunity. Congratulations on a great set of numbers. Uh, so my first question is regarding talent. Uh, so as you said, that you know, for your accelerating hiring of freshers and uh, also laterals, uh, as far as freshers are concerned, uh, so, how much time does it take to train the freshers and uh, you know uh, uh, make them billable? Uh, because uh, ERND services are relatively is a relatively more uh, specialized uh, field compared to IT services. So, I was just wondering uh, how much time does it take to make them billable? And second, uh, uh, when do you see the uh, beneficial uh, impact on margins because of this? Um, from a from a pressure perspective, uh, I think anywhere between six to nine months is typically uh, what what we take to really make them uh, billable. Um, uh, the, uh, the, as, as you rightly said, the R and D uh, takes uh, you know we, we need to we need to train uh, the engineers uh, uh, you know both uh, classroom training as well as uh, you know on the job training. Uh, even after six months. Uh, they they usually uh, uh, you know basically get in as a as a bench resource or or uh, you know buffers within uh, existing projects and so on and and it's usually after about nine months or so we, we actually convert them into billing. Um, sorry, I didn't get the second question. Uh, so I was uh, asking that uh, when can we ex uh, so uh, six to nine months is the uh, uh, gestation period. So probably by FY twenty four we can expect some. Positive impact on margins because of this, because of the substitution. So we, 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 I, I think we don't hire freshers for a, for a, for anything to do with margins, right? So that's a wrong. We're not an IT company that really, you know, flattens the pyramid by hiring freshers. That doesn't work in our business. So we don't. We consider we consider freshers as people who will contribute, you know, uh, you know, moving forward. And uh, and and typically, when you look at hiring, uh, you know, uh, last year we added about. Thousand thousand hundred, uh, you know, freshers. Uh, this year we might we we are looking at an increased number, two thousand five hundred or three thousand. Um, and so that so that's the plan. But the plan is not to really hire them so that I can, uh, you know, uh, you know, improve my margins. 
Okay, so and just one uh, data question. Uh, what would be the on-site offshore effort mix for the quarter? It is uh, about 90 10. Okay, 90 10. And so, uh, last question, if I can squeeze, please. Uh, so uh, this April we can expect the uh, uh, a wage hike, a normal wage hike cycle. I'm, I'm sorry if I missed that in the commentary. Yeah, so uh, we have given uh, a wage hike in January itself uh, for uh, you know all the junior people. You know, I would say almost 65 uh, percent or close to 70 percent of the workforce has already been, been given a wage hike. Uh, the senior people will have the wage hike from April onwards. Sure, so thank you so much and best of luck for the future. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bhavik Mehta from JP Morgan. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity and congratulations on a good set of results. So, on the wage hike, uh, can you please quantify the impact of wage hike this quarter? Because if I look at your employee cost, it has gone up by just four and a half percent sequentially, and uh, while revenues are up seven percent, and even as a percent of sales, the employee costs are like the lowest in the past eight quarters. So, can you please help me understand this? Sure, uh, this is Bharat. So, let me take that question. Um, as uh, Manoj said on the earlier question, that uh, we have done the wage hike for almost 65 to 70 percent of our workforce. On a quarterly basis, the in, uh, the impact of the wage hike is about 150 basis point. However, that has been partially offset by the other operating lever that are present in the organization in terms of the utilizations or the pyramid rationalization. And also, it has been helped by the better uh, realization from our fixed price projects and some of the rate hikes. So, net net, the impact what you see is already you know partially offset during the quarter. And what we believe that with our volumes and further uh, you know leverage on the operating efficiency, we would be able to you know kind of uh, neutralize that over the next one or two quarters. Okay, okay, that's helpful. And just uh, looking at FY23, uh, what are the headwinds and tailwinds uh, you're looking on the margin side? Uh, you know, because the supply issues remain elevated and, you know, there could be some potential return of travel and facility costs also coming back next year. So how should we look at margins uh, for, for FY23? Yeah, so let me take that again. Uh, of course, uh, there are certain, you know, inflation and cost inflation in the industry and there are supply chain concerns and that is not, uh, you know, hidden from anyone. And I think we have been taking the right steps, whether in terms of the wage hikes, retention or the employee engagement. Of course, uh, with all those, uh, you know, the supply chain constraints and the wage hike that we have done, but we think that is important from the, you know, the employee perspective because uh, that will help us in terms of, you know, retaining the key talent to deliver on our, uh, you know, critical projects and all the deals and the new programs that we are winning. But uh, I think there are enough levers available, uh, you know, to neutralize, as I said on the earlier question as well, whether that uh, that is our offshore-centric model on the delivery or the, you know, the superior management execution on the project. We said that, uh, you know, our uh, FP is already, you know, five, six rise project is already 54% of the total daily FD. But what we see that that is helping us in terms of the bottom line because we are able to, you know, execute uh, perfectly, you know, deliver those projects on time and that is helping us in terms of realizing the better rates. We are able to source better rate hikes on the TNM engagements also from the customers. Thirdly, I think the forex currency is also supportive. That will also help to, in terms of you know, uh, uh, you know, setting off some of these uh, cost inflation impacts, uh, whether in terms of the wage hikes or the additions. And thirdly, and the lastly, I would say that I think we're expanding and with our volumes and the scales, I think that some of the other uh, cost line items would be non-linear, uh, you know, uh, which will help us, you know, in terms of maintaining or uh, I would say, you know subsetting the margins inflation or uh, inflation on the margins and uh, we are also expanding into the you know we are expanding into the SCZ which will also help in terms of you know bringing down our effective tech state so net net I think we see there are enough levers available for us to you know to manage our margin well and in the in the range that we are operating today okay okay thank you that's it from my side thank you the next question is from the line of Vimal Gohil from Union Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, sir, firstly, uh, the question is uh, related to the previous one. Uh, uh, on the fixed price projects, uh, I think that has been one of the big levers for margin, uh, for your margins. You got better realizations there. 
and over a period of time we've seen the fixed price uh, projects uh, increase in terms of mix now uh, could you just give us some sense based on your assessment of your own contract uh, or your own deal pipeline as to how sustainable are these fixed price project mix uh, going forward that's question number 2 uh, question number 1 the second one is on the uh, impact uh, how do we see this uh, impact of you know the uh, uh, your ott uh, apps uh, seeing some sort of a slowdown you've seen the recent uh, uh, results of netflix uh, they had a severe impact of uh, you know losing subscribers so how should we read the impact on that and lastly if you could just highlight uh, uh, you know uh, you've seen uh, uh, some a bit of hiring slowdown i mean we in q2 we saw 705 people getting uh, getting employed. Uh, we see half of that in this particular quarter versus what we've observed generally in the industry is that uh, the industry is sitting at uh, a lifetime high, uh, uh, you know, hiring. Uh, so how should we read that uh, data point? Thanks. Okay. Uh, let me take the first one. Uh, I think you your first question was on the sustainability uh, sustainability of the fixed price projects. I think uh, for the last few years, if you see that we have been operating in a range of 50 50, you know, plus minus, and I feel that in the you know next one or two years, that ratio and proportion is not going to change much. It could move, you know, uh, two percent, three percent here or there, but it's going to be in this range above. Yeah. Uh, on the second question, there was uh, OTT and the OTT slowdown. Uh, this is Nitin here. Let me take that. I think uh, what you're seeing from Netflix is really the intensity of competition in the market and not so much uh, turning away or a slowdown in demand for OTT. Right? So I think there's a fundamental difference there. One is if there's an overall demand, decrease in demand for OTT itself. Uh, and the second is whether there's increased competition in which is then taking away uh, customer wallet and customer uh, uh, money away from Netflix. I think it's really the latter. So to that extent, more power to us because we are all for more competition because that powers more deals for us, that powers what yeah. we are in business for. No, absolutely. As Mithun said, I, I don't think uh, I, I don't think there is a slowdown in the OTT market. I'm not sure why you read it. If you're assume, take, making that assumption from the Netflix news, then I think that's a wrong assumption. Um, uh, hiring slowdown uh, in, in Q4, um, you know, uh, typically uh, our, our pressures typically come in in Q2 and Q3. And that is why you will see a slightly higher numbers that we have added in Q2 and Q3. So that is, it has nothing to do with, uh, you know, slowing down and so on. We continue to add people. So um, so I, 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 I think uh, over the last three quarters, we have added upwards of 1,000 thousand hires uh, each quarter. So so I think we are, we are pretty good there. Uh, it's a fresher edition for 23. Uh, if is it quantifiable? How, how many freshers are you expected to add? We are expecting to add between 2,500 to 3,000 freshers. And in 22, how much is it? How much do we have? We added? Uh, we've added about 1,100 or so. 1,100, and that is going to go to 2,500 to 3,000. Almost. Yeah. Oh, great. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, all the very best. Sure. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ankur Jain from Research India Private Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Thanks for taking my question. Um, I had a couple of questions. So my first question was with respect to the um, uh, recently launched platform, T-Engage, that we have launched. So I just wanted to understand like what kind of response we have got. Uh, did we got any major deals on this? And my second question is, is about the Renaissance and Tata LXC uh, EV Innovation Center that we have established. So what potential benefits uh, do we see from this partnership? Sure. So, uh, Uncle, uh, maybe I'll take that. This is Nathan here. Uh, T-Engage, as you know, we actually did a global launch for it uh, just towards the end of March. Right? So we're really just about three weeks, uh, four weeks into the uh, into the into the time from where we first launched it, announced, announced it to the world. Having said that, we've had a brilliant response in US because we were very clear that our first target market should be US, our first deal should have result from there. And I think we're already having multiple customer conversations, enormous interest in uh, what the platform represents and the direction that we're taking in terms of leading with patient experience. Right? Typically because most of the platforms that have been developed have been developed more to serve the operational needs of hospitals, we are taking a different view. 
that it comes from an experience perspective rather than an operations perspective. So that's a quick view on T-Engage. I think uh, we just have to wait because we also know that platform deals always take time. One is to establish interest. The second is to actually get people to adopt because this is a major decision for them. It's just not a one-time consumption. So we expect that it will take some time, but I think there are good times ahead. On the NEVIC, which is our next generation EV uh, innovation center, I think it's really about the fundamental point that the world is divided into two parts, right? Traditional OEMs who know how to build vehicles but are now trying to make them electric and build, build in digital uh, layers on top in terms of connectivity, IoT, uh, data management and so on. And you have the other world which is digital to start with and they're now trying to build vehicles. Right? And this is really the kind of companies that you see in the world. Uh, our job is to act as a bridge in between, right? Because what we are bringing together with uh, Renesa is really the point that both both parties, whether you're born digital or you're born uh, traditional, fundamentally have a gap when it comes to electronics and software, first of all. And that is also the mood point for what makes up for electric powertrain and electric vehicles and what differentiates. So our job is to make that journey faster and easier for both sides. And then for the traditional OEMs, we have other offerings, including uh, Tether, which is a connected vehicle platform and so on, which we believe will be an added value offering on top. So to that extent, it is a core offering of electronics and software that is needed to accelerate electric powertrain development and a layer of software that comes above, which powers the digital part for customers who need that. Yeah, I'm thinking. We're really, yeah, we're really targeting India to start with, India and APAC, and then we want to go global, right? Because we're very sharp in our focus. Our general EV capabilities apply to everybody, but they are predominantly passenger car. So what we're doing now is we're targeting the two-wheeler, three-wheeler light vehicle segments. And for those markets, we believe they're far more sensitive to cost and time pressure, and that is where ready-made offerings help. They are not going to go down on a path of full development. So just to add to this, are we planning to launch our own operating system for automobile division? No. Yeah, thanks. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Taran Uppal from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for the opportunity. The two questions from my side. Uh, one on the on-site offshore effort six, you spoke about 10 to 90. Uh, so is this historical low for you? Or what is the normal on-site offshore effort mix? Uh, and do you expect this to reverse in FI 23, which can be a margin headwind? That is question number one. The second question is on transport vertical. Uh, it, uh, it would be very helpful if you can, uh, you can uh, give some color in terms of the demand in the sub-verticals of transport, let's say ADAS, EV, and connected vehicles. How are you seeing the demand? And is it, uh, if, it, if it is possible to quantify the contribution of these three sub-verticals, that would be really helpful. Thanks. Sure. So our on-site offshore, uh, you know, I think it has been in this uh, 10, 90 for I think a couple of quarters at least, or in and around uh, this. Uh, you know, pre-COVID, I think it was more like uh, 30, 30, 70, or something around around that, right? Um, so whether it will go back to those levels, I don't think it will go back to those levels. Uh, it could it could settle somewhere in between, uh, but but for now, I think we are we are okay with this uh, number. And uh, as long as our customers don't insist on uh, on uh, everybody coming on site and so on, uh, our, our, our uh, you know our delivery processes are structured uh, very well in such a way that we can deliver uh, offshore remotely. And I think we would want to leverage that uh, you know so that uh, we can we can deliver both cost benefits to our customers as well as uh, you know uh, from a margin perspective also you know uh, retain the sort of you know margins that that we have at this point in time. Uh, and uh, regarding the transportation business that you asked about, uh, if you if you had noticed over the last three quarters, uh, uh, the transportation business has been uh, accelerating and has been really leading the uh, growth for uh, for Tata uh, um, So this this uh, Q4 also, I think, uh, transportation uh, showed a smart uh, growth led by you know uh, you know multi-year deals, large deals, uh, both on the. Uh, electric vehicle side, EV side, uh, ADA does, uh, 
um, uh, and uh, you know connected infotainment uh, you know side right so we we definitely are seeing a good uh, traction in in all the three areas uh, of auto automotive for once i think uh, it's a, it's a good position to be in uh, I, i'll not be able to share uh, you know break up or or details because we if we don't share those uh, details but having said that the fact that we have been growing aggressively over the last few quarters would give you a good indication good idea of how our automotive business is performing Sure, sir. Thanks, thanks a lot. And last question is on the, the conflict in Europe. Any any impact on your business as such, and specifically from the auto OEMs and tier one side? Sorry, talking about the talking about Russia and Ukraine piece, right? Did you talk about yes, the conflict? Yes, yes. I'm sorry, we missed the question. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about that. No. The war. Uh, okay. I, I I don't think there is any. Uh, we we are not seeing any effect of that. we don't have uh, any customers or uh, any development centers in that geography in that part of the world and um, so far as most of our customers are in the western uh, europe region and we have not seen any slow down or any effect of this uh, or any of our projects so far sure sir thanks thanks a lot and all the best for fight thank you thank you thank you The next question is from the line of Navin Bhotra, individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, congratulations, sir, for excellent set of numbers. Uh, my question is partly uh, we have answered partly regarding the hiring outlook. If you can uh, guide us about the net hiring targets for this year in view of the uh, accelerated pressure hiring, you uh, told us about two thousand five hundred to three thousand ten. so if you can uh, enlighten on uh, this one in view of the uh, high attrition rate of 20% uh, and uh, high demand outlook how do you see the net hiring outlook for the current year sir because we added around 27% of our employees in the last concluded financial year uh, so in this view uh, if you can enlighten us on the hiring net hiring targets for this year you're talking of net hiring targets sir so we we don't have net hiring targets right we really don't i mean we, we can't work like that because it is such a dynamic dynamic world that we are in right so we we only have gross hiring targets and uh, uh, you know and, and of course uh, you know uh, every quarter we need to see uh, we need to really see how we can control attrition and and so on right um, so uh, so the numbers that i talked to you are uh, are all gross numbers right and uh, and if, if you look at it uh, 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 the, the last year we've uh, we added the uh, upwards of uh, 2000 people net yeah so i would i would i mean if you ask me a number i would say net hiring will be somewhere in between uh, 3000 to 3500 but we we're not really planned it in that way okay okay Because uh, in this year, is financial year, we added around 27 percent. That you said 2014 employees, net employees, and our revenue has gone up by 35 percent. Some currency impact is also there. So uh, uh, currency impact is there. Utilization is also there. Then of course you know lot of uh, um, what do you say fixed price uh, you know project uh, impact is there. Yeah. And there is of course IT and platforms and all of that. So all of that put together. Okay. So this trend uh, you see continuing for the this financial year as well because we are signing the uh, many multi-year deals now. So you would be having some outlook on this one. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, I think we 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 have uh, you know as, as compared to I would say when starting of the last uh, financial year uh, I'm starting with a much healthier uh, order book this financial year. Okay. And so, the last uh, question is regarding the number one customer is from the automotive or the from the media side. If you can enlighten, because in the uh, if you can uh, broad base our database, because this year we see sometimes uh, media, from the media vertical number one is there, sometimes automotive is number one, because in the postal ballot you uh, 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 related party transaction limits were increased for JLR. And this year also, it has been increased for 50 percent for JLR related party transactions. So, in the data set, if you can provide us the more granular data about this is from automotive or this is from media side, because the earlier uh, all the periods it was JLR. Uh, 
So Matt did not have I am not sure why we are so bothered about that. And, and if you look at our competition and so on, nobody discloses this, right? They only talk about top 5 or no, top 10. We, we used to disclose about that. So that's top right. 1, top 5 and so on. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Priya Rohera from MK Global. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir, for giving me an opportunity to ask a question. Uh, my first question relates to, you know, uh, the observation that you are entering the year with a very strong deal pipeline and maybe the highest ever customer additions. If you can give some qualitative or quantitative color on the customers which have been added and maybe if you can quantify the deal pipeline, uh, which gives a much higher confidence as reflected in your voice as well. Um, you know, usually we don't uh, we don't we don't give uh, the details quantitative details about uh, deal pipeline and so on. But having said that, I think in each of the quarters we have been talking of uh, a number of addition of new customers. Uh, you know, whether it's in the automotive area, uh, you know, the OEM customers as well as supplier, you know, companies. Uh, so some of the some of the you know leading uh, you know automotive uh, uh, you know companies, both OEMs as well as Suppliers are uh, are our customers right now, and, and 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 a few of them have been added in the in the last financial year with a multi-year you know uh, multi-million dollar you know sort of deal pipelines and so on, right? So so I think uh, if you look at the automotive uh, you know industry, uh, both with uh, OEMs including new age OEMs as well as uh, uh, the suppliers, we won some very good deals in in the last financial year. And that has actually helped, uh, you know, accelerate, uh, you know, the automotive, uh, you know, growth over the last three quarters which we have seen. And the media and communications, again, we continue to talk about the new deals that they've been winning. Like last quarter, we talked about uh, the, the the operator uh, customer that we have won in the in the Middle East. So the good part about uh, about uh, the media and communication businesses, traditionally, we have been focused on the U.S. as well as Europe. But in this uh, last financial year, we have expanded geographically also. We now have customers in Latin America. We have customers in Middle East and Africa. Um, and of course, there's a lot of customers in India as well. So from, from that point of view, definitely uh, from a media and communication perspective, we have shown steady uh, growth, steady customer, uh, you know, steady uh, you know, uh, revenue growth. And that has come with, uh, with uh, new customer additions in, in all these new geographies. At the same time, we've also been able to um, win, uh, you know, platform deals, you know, our, our own intellectual properties and, and products. So that's also another key area for us where we are investing in. Uh, on, on the medical side, again, uh, you know, we've, we've, uh, in each quarter, we've talked about the large deals that we have won. Um, and uh, as compared to the previous financial year, they've grown close to about 68, 60, 66 to 67 percent. That would indicate the sort of... Uh, you know, growth that we have seen in that particular business. So I would say overall, uh, uh, as compared to the previous financial years, we've had good deal wins. We've got, we've opened up new geographies. We have, uh, uh, you know, um, we have larger, you know, multi-year deals that gives us the confidence that, uh, you know, the deal pipeline in order book is, is pretty strong as we get into this new financial year. Sure, that's helpful. So just as a fallout of that question, is it possible to say some directional color on whether uh, both in, say, uh, the transportation and mainly autom automotive and maybe in media and communications between the traditional guys and the next-gen uh, born digital guys, like say like an OTT player or say a 5G implementation, you know, some sort of mix between the two because that clearly indicates uh, in terms of the, you know, growth pipeline, which uh, would mean uh, there are more chances of next-gen becoming a higher share in our composition of revenues. Yeah, so I mean, yeah. in case you are tracking this internally, I'm sure, but just maybe a more qualitative color over the say, past one year, how this has shaped up. Yeah, so, well, Priya, in this year, maybe I'll take that. And I think we look at it more from a portfolio duration, right? Because when you think about this, there are uh, pluses and minuses for each part. The traditional players are pivoting and transforming. So to that extent, uh, you're running along with their speed of transformation. With the new age, you know that there are a whole set of things that they don't bring as capabilities. So you have the ability to craft larger deals, but they bring with themselves enormous risks. So we've also seen enough of the new age OEMs go belly up. 
uh, with no funding or no money left uh, and then either getting sold for a song or just just stopping right in midway right this is true both in the media and communication space where you have as many new OTT players are cropping up and then dying or running out of money as much as it is the traditional players who are now moving to a direct to consumer right whether it is like we have seen the disney or a discovery or anybody else going digital directly so i think for us it's a very careful portfolio management problem and uh, what also matters to us is the brands that they're going to be working with so on one hand there's the excitement of new age because a lot of the lessons and capabilities are built with them but it's also a matter of risk so that is all that i'll tell you but i think about well, that the heartening thing for us is um, you can take any sector that we work in and you can take the top 10 leaders in that and you can be sure that we work with half of them at least sure this is this is pretty helpful and if uh, more uh, data uh, keep in question you mentioned about addition of 2500 to 3000 freshers and on which would be uh, freshers and the total additions could be in the region of 3000 to 3500 basically that's correct that's the range that we're indicating sure 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 this is very helpful thank you and wish you all the best thank you so much thank you The next question is from the line of Abhishek Bandari from Namura. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Good afternoon and congrats on very strong numbers. Uh, sir, I had a couple of questions. The first is, you know, if you could get some sense on, you know, the mix of your business in terms of, broadly speaking, how much portfolio would be annuity and how much would be, you know, project-driven business for you. Second is, you know, now we are touching, you know, close to $300 million plus kind of annual revenue. uh do you think time has come now for you to start investing very aggressively on sales uh, you know to accelerate uh, you know the growth further from here because you know now we also have the benefit of uh, probably one of the highest margins we have ever seen in our history uh, so maybe you could you know elaborate on these two and if i have any more i'll come back thank you yeah so um, uh, we have been investing uh, aggressively on sales over the last uh, four quarters uh, we have uh, brought in uh, a lot of good uh, you know resources that can support us uh, you know both in uh, in us as well as uh, europe so so that is that is a given i mean that uh, we continue to do uh, and and not just uh, investing in uh, uh, you know sales uh, resources alone but also investing in tools and training for them right so we have we have, we have planned out planned uh, something uh, you know uh, along those lines uh, Um, you know, in 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 the Q1 and Q2 of, of this year, so so there are a lot of lot of action on the definitely a lot of action on the sales front. Um, from an uh, annuity versus uh, fixed price uh, or, or uh, uh, you know project based uh, engagements, uh, what what I can tell you is that you know over the last uh, couple of years we have moved the needle strongly towards annuity businesses. and uh, and not really give you a percentage of how much is annuity or how much is fixed bid and so on but that's that's a journey that 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 is taking place and i think the the sort of consistency in revenue that you have seen quarter on quarter is largely because of this uh, the moment from you know project based engagements to uh, annuity and uh, you know uh, long term you know uh, customer relationships and i think that it's a, it's a positive uh, trend that we are seeing and 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 we hope that that would continue Sure, so that's a full sermon. Last follow-up. Uh, so you know, while I heard through the call that you don't quantify your pipeline, uh, you know, you only give qualitative colors, and possibly the only indicator for us to gauge the growth could be your headcount addition. Could you give us some other indicator, you know, which could give us some sense of, you know, where your business is growing? You know, in terms of, uh, you know, headcount addition is one. But do you think there are anything else? What you report? Uh, could you know, give us some indication there? Yeah, so uh, I mean, I can't imagine what else we can give you. But uh, Abhishek, uh, the simplest one I would say is that if you look at uh, what we called out as strategic uh, uh, direction, we talked of in the long term our mix of uh, industries going to a 40-40-20, right, between automotive and uh, media and communication and healthcare. And uh, we have moved the needle, of course. We have gone from two, three years back where it was five in healthcare, about 50 plus in uh, automotive and the rest being media. So we are almost there, 15% in healthcare and about 42, 43 each in the other two. If you look at it, the trajectory will continue in that path. If you look at our strategic direction, so you take the bulk of the resources uh, hiring and you distribute them back in a 40, 20, 40, 40, 20 plus ratio, 
will actually get the direction of where we are looking at stopping and where our numbers will come from. That's one way to look at it. The other way to look at it would be, of course, the fact that uh, we are looking at a, a, a better balancing of our geomix. Now, that has lesser bearing for us. Why? Because we don't do too much on site. In any case, for us, everything is offshore, or large part of it is offshore. So, we don't have to worry about uh, uh, people addition or staffing overseas. That's a, a smaller problem for us. So, uh, I would say that's the, that's the largest guidance that we can provide. Thank you. Mr. Bandari, may we request that you return to the question queue for follow up questions? The next question is from the line of Madhu Babu from Ghana HSBC. Please go ahead. Uh, so just on the emerging verticals, uh, we have been investing a bit on the, that, like even in the rail transport and all in the transport side. Uh, so how is that uh, diversification on the emerging, emerging verticals going on first? And second, in terms of uh, Ukraine impact, see, uh, are there any boutique vendors in Ukraine and where, is there any possible market share shift towards us there? Because on the digital engineering, there there has been some large vendors like EPAM there. But on the, on the embedded side, are there any players there and are there potential market share shift? And last one, with the kind of a strong valuation where stock is getting, could we use this as a tool to go for acquisitions? Thanks. Adjacencies, how we handle leading to Ukraine and boutique ventures. Sure, sure, sure. Um, uh, Adjacencies, I think, uh, I think on the on the transportation business, we called out rail uh, and off-road vehicles as an uh, adjacency. Uh, I would uh, honestly say it has been a little slow. Maybe about five percent is what uh, you know we have we have achieved. Our target is to achieve close to twenty percent uh, over the next three years. Um, so uh, we uh, we don't we don't have much to report in this quarter regarding adjacencies. It is it is hard work. It is business development. It is you know new sales addition. So all of those investments are happening as we speak. Uh, but I'm I'm confident that in a, in a couple of quarters we should see some good uh, you know traction there. Um, regarding uh, Ukraine, uh, uh, regarding companies like Epam and so on. Yes, we are seeing a few inquiries coming our way. Uh, where uh, customers have outsourced to companies like EPAM and uh, they're really looking to de-risk and looking to see if, uh, you know, they can move that work to companies like us in India, right? So, so we, we do see a, a trickle of such inquiries coming our way. Uh, we, can't, we can't claim a large set of inquiries, but definitely there are a few inquiries. Um, uh, regarding M&A, yeah, I think uh, that, that, that's always there, but... Uh, you know, like I say, some you know some other investors of ours, you know, tell us very clearly that we have been growing very aggressively, 30% plus uh, growth organically. So what do they need to look at inorganic? Don't uh, don't lose your way by doing it inorganic. So that's the advice. So we are we are keeping that in mind. We are definitely keeping that in mind. And but at the same time, if there is a, there is a good good company that uh, that's a strategic fit for us, uh, and it comes within our valuation range, definitely we would, we would go for it. Yeah, so maybe I'll just add to what uh, Manoj said, to the listen here, Madhu. Uh, on the adjacency side, while we did, of course, call out uh, what's happening with us on the transportation part, do note that we have similar adjacencies of media and new media and uh, um, NRNCV vertical. We have similarly pharma and digital health and healthcare. So uh, the ultimate goal, of course, is to converge to a 20, 20% of each of these adjacencies as a mix of the overall vertical. And we are at different points of the journey. So if you look at media, new media, we are far ahead of what our targets were for this, this point of time. Uh, in the case of uh, uh, digital health, we are well on our way. In pharma, we are a little behind. Like transportation, we are a little behind again. But uh, for us, I think that's the way of business. Why? Because you look at two parameters. Revenue is one, marquee customer is another. I think we are tracking well on the customer front. So we just had to give it time. Okay, sir. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Devashish Majumdar from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Hello to the management team. Thank you very much for taking my question and congratulations to us. Extremely this is the operator. Sorry to interrupt you, sir. We are not able to hear you clearly. Please use the handset mode. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, congratulations to the management team and thank you very much for taking my question. Uh, sir, I have a question which is uh, not linked to Q4, more linked to FY23 and beyond. 
if i understand the rnd business nature correctly it's a long gestation high investment uh, business at the initial stage and once you reach an inflection point the fruits are also equally very very high uh, so from your delivery for last two uh, years especially last six quarters it seems to be that we have reached to that inflection point uh, where the investment is behind us and we are getting the fruits uh, of that investment Uh, so, uh, just wanted to get some sense uh, at what stage we are with most of our clients, especially top twenty, top fifty clients. Uh, have we reached to that stage where we are getting uh, these fruits uh, back, uh, and which is visible into your growth and margin? So that is first one. And uh, second one is if I or uh, if I also can get some sense that uh, how is the client mining activity uh, for, is happening from your side, especially in the top fifty clients? Are we getting some pricing power with them? Uh, 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 and uh, is it? And what is the direction going forward? Sure. Uh, so, 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 so definitely, uh, when we look at uh, when we look at the top customers uh, and when we look at the top list, uh, uh, there is uh, there is a lot of uh, you know client finding uh, uh, that is happening, and uh, a lot of the growth that uh, we see uh, you know in in in, in the last uh, few quarters um, has been. Uh, Growing our existing customers, growing our existing revenues. If you look at our, uh, you know, top five customers, you see that the amount of, uh, you know, mining that we have done to really, you know, grow the customer base, right? So, um, we are winning a market share from competition, uh, and and in, in general, uh, there is also a lot of new services that our customers want us to take up, digital engineering services and so on. So the market is also expanding, and and we are also eating away market share from uh, competition. It's a combination of both that is really helping us uh, grow. When you look at the life cycle where we are uh, at this point in time, I would say it, it depends on. Uh, uh, I, I, there is no one answer there, right? It depends on um, each customer situation, uh, customers that we have been there for, you know, last 10 years and so on. Uh, of course, uh, you know, we we are deeply entrenched, uh, and as the customers are looking at. New areas, new digital opportunities, and so on. We get engaged, and you know, we we go. And in in case of customers that have added recently, then there is a lot of headroom. There is a lot of headroom left for us to really tap into, and so on. Um, as I said, right, uh, we have been in US and and Europe for a for a number of years. So in in some of the major verticals, which is media and communication and transportation, we have pretty established relationships. In healthcare, it's a relatively new business, so. Uh, the relationship is still new. There is again a lot of headroom for uh, expansion and, and and really seeing how we can grow. Similarly, from a geography perspective, you see the newer geographies. You know, we just got in. We just understanding the market, uh, and and definitely we believe there is a lot of headroom in each of those geographies as well. So, so I think uh, at this point in time, uh, I, I I don't think we need to be worried if uh, if we have reached a saturation point or so. There is a huge potential available still to be exploited, and I think we are on the right track as far as uh, those pursuits are concerned. Excellent. Uh, one one last question, if I may squeeze. Uh, if you see the, our our last four quarters performance, there is no seasonality as such. Uh, there are consistent six to seven percent growth sequentially in each and every quarter. So, uh, is it like our business is currently structured in that way that there not be any seasonality going forward, or at least in the near term visibility that we have? Uh, and uh, so, that, that that's the last question that I have. Yeah. So, uh, if you look at it, not just the last four quarters, I think, but last seven quarters also, we have been consistently growing. So, I think that is uh, that's again due to all the efforts that we have put in in. Uh, in, in, in of course, one is mining the accounts, two is you know generating, getting those new logos. And getting those logo, getting those you know uh, multi-year deals also, right? So what happens okay. typically is every every quarter when we win these deals, in that quarter the revenue may not be significant. It may be a small revenue, but over the next two, three, or four quarters is when we we really ramp up teams, we mine those account, and we keep growing. So as as long as we continue to uh, you know open new logos and open, I mean get into these large multi-year deals and so on, I think the trajectory is good for us. Excellent. Thank you very much for answering the question. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Hiren Ved from Alchemy Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, Manoj and Nitin, and you know, congratulations for consistently 
delivering superb numbers. Uh, actually, most of my questions are answered, but uh, I guess uh, one of the participants asked that question, and I would reframe it, is that given the kind of tightness that we are seeing in resource availability, right, are you therefore able to translate that into better pricing, especially in the transportation vertical? Yeah, so, so definitely we've, uh, we've gone back to customers, uh, you know, wherever possible, and, and we have benefited from, uh, you know, uh, the rate increase also from some of our customers, especially for whom we are been consistently delivering value and so on, right? So we we benefited definitely benefited from that. Um, um, yeah, but at the same time, uh, you know, the demand is demand is so much that uh, uh, you know uh, the, the challenge for us is to have those uh, uh, you know uh, trained engineers available that so that we can tap into that demand. So so that's where you know we are putting our attention, focus and attention, and I'm sure for the next two quarters that is where the attention would be. Okay, great. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I agree with your strategy and I would recommend that we don't do any hasty acquisitions because I think there's just enough to grow uh, organically uh, rather than being distracted by any inorganic opportunities unless obviously, you know, you guys find the right fit. Uh, but, you know, thanks again and uh, keep doing the good work. Congratulations. Thank you.